So hello, everyone. It's Michael Jacob with Unleashing yeah. Intuition Secrets. We got Juan O'Savin with us once again. Uh, he has a lot to share, as he always does, and um, we're going to uh, jump in. Juan, thanks for joining me. Hey, good to see you there, bro. <laughs> Excellent. So you've, well, uh, you've you been know, on a little tear lately. So what, uh, what, what do you have to offer for us? Well, I mean, I've been, uh, you know, this last weekend, uh, I don't know if you heard about it or not. I had a bunch of uh, folks in uh, to Vegas that are running for uh, secretary of state in various mm -hmm. states. And uh, we had a kind of a summit and uh, had some just fantastic folks that uh, showed up. There was about uh, 40 of us and uh, uh, we had a really um, interesting meeting it was there it was outstanding and uh getting ready to go back uh, at these seats where um the mischief has occurred in how they uh conduct the votes and a lot of times the secretary of state is such a key position It's like we're getting uh, get a little interference there. It's kind of in and out. So looks like he's trying to come back in. There we go. I got a visual on you. No sound yet. I haven't touched a thing yet. Let me uh, see if I can come up with a different internet connection here for you, Michael. Okay. If that's an issue, because it popped out and that's so all I'll call you right back. All right, sounds good. All right. All right. All right. Bye. 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 I don't know what the issue was. So sometimes when you come into a new place, you got to get the internet just right. So you just popped into a new place, it's traveling. So it tries to set up really quick and, you know, sometimes it doesn't always, uh, you know, come through good. That's right. I'll be back. So popping out, popping back in. He's a traveling man. See, he's got his uh, boots on. You guys got your boots on? I almost put my boots on today just to have fun with it. <laughs> You know, the shit kickers. And uh, cause we need we need some shit kicking going on right now, don't we? Oh uh, yeah. So I think the you know, in the future that as we start to uh expose uh more things, because the exposure I believe is uh happening on a level that's unprecedented right now. And uh having guys like Juan with his background, uh, because you know, for me, being twenty four years in a in the SEAL teams at highest level, SEAL Team 6 and combat action, and then going into the CIA for 11 years and uh, going to combat zones all over the place. It was kind of, a, uh, you know, having been a uh, operator, you know, someone that's actually, you know, doing the missions and then being on the other side and putting the operations together that the guys would go do. That was really cool. So I got a bigger picture of it and I was able to, uh, you know, add a lot to that. And I think because of that, there was a lot of uh, baddies that went down when I was, uh, when I was in the CIA, you know, you know, ha having a little piece, you know, of that action and being a part of that was, uh, was outstanding. So when I have, you know, Juan on as a guest, you know, I, I have some deep, deep knowledge <laughs> of a lot of stuff. Juan is layered deeper and deeper and deeper. It's so it's, uh, you know, I don't have access to what he has access to, access to, but every time he comes in, uh, in on a show, he shares, uh, unprecedented, uh, amounts of information. So hopefully we can get it back. Not then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try and reschedule this for another time. So maybe he's, uh, he's getting another, uh, internet, maybe right on another computer. I have this on occasion where I'll come in and I'll set up a computer and it won't even work. And I, I always have a backup. So you always, that's one of the things that, you know, as an operator, you always had a backup to a backup. And there were sometimes we'd have like three, it was like insane, three levels of communication because we had to have that, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, crypto, basically your, 
all your communications are encrypted. Uh, it's it's quite quite hard to get some of this stuff to you know operate. And it looks like he's uh, he's coming back in. Hopefully, we can uh, get the show going. All right, sir. He's connecting to the audio, so hopefully we can uh, you know make it happen. There we go. We got you on audio again. All right. There oh, we that's go. much How's clearer. That? Yeah, that's that's better. All right. Yeah, that's I, worth I, the wait. Yeah. <laughs> thought I had I thought I had it on the uh, Wi-Fi and I I didn't and so uh, I you know I rocketed in. I thought it just automatically went on to it. It didn't. I guess I've been gone too long. That's <laughs> one. You know, I, I was just thinking about it. You know, maybe the next time you have have the show, I'll, I'll have my boots on and we'll just uh, you know uh, kind of make that the theme. So we'll uh, have everybody else have their boots on. You know, that's watching the show. <laughs> Well, you know, I was looking down on uh, Reno when I flew over it about uh, an hour and a half ago, and I was thinking, gosh, I got to drop in on you, and and uh, we'll have to do a show together. In fact, uh, uh, Joey Gilbert, the attorney there, has got some, uh, uh, something great going on um, out there on the 15th, mm. and uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be preoccupied um, down in Texas on something. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing a private showing of the uh, sound of freedom with Jim Caviezel. He and I are going down there and um, Very good. we're uh, doing that. We're, we're locking in the uh, um, money that we need for the marketing side of the movie. Sweet. Yeah. So we can do a fall <laughs> release. So, but uh, you know, somewhere in here, I'll darken your door up there and you know, we'll go see if we can find a, a good steak somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. You treated me uh, in Vegas. So, that was one of the best steaks I've ever had. <laughs> so oh, good. Much. It'll be my Well, I'm sure time. they got good stuff up there, too. I'll bet you you can find something. If oh, I, yeah. If I get to oh, yeah. It. Reno's got some good places. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, that's uh, Robert Davy Steele is going to be uh, there in Nevada on the 15th, too. I'm, I'm looking at hooking up with him and doing something there. And then maybe actually traveling with him a little bit. So that'll be fun. The Unrig tour. Well, and you know, Robert and I uh, were just talking a little bit ago, and and uh, uh, you know what he's doing is a very important uh, thing, and mm. um, I'm, you know, going to be uh, supporting that. Uh, you know, I, I feel it's very important for people to meet folks like you firsthand, um, the sheriffs that are traveling with them, some of the other uh, people that are running for office and uh, currently in office. And uh, those, you, you can't really appreciate just how important those in-person conversations are with folks and uh, kind of get a feel for how they say things. It's not just what people say, even little things in how they say it help you kind of get a, a better feel for where they're at, what needs to be done, how to do it best. You know, there's some people that they just want to come off the rails and you mm -hmm. just can't get to real workable uh, solutions. And because uh, they're not, they're ranting, mm -hmm. but the ranting isn't resolving itself down to, okay, and here's exactly what we're going to do and uh, how we're going to do it. And so the other side wins just because we can't get uh, traction. You know, you hit the gas, you know, full throttle, never get out of the freaking mud, mud bog. So you got to, mm -hmm. you know, find ways, you know, how you can actually get traction, get out of this whole wrench, just like the meetings I had uh, this last weekend mm -hmm. uh, with all the folks uh, running for uh, secretary of state around the country. Mm -hmm. and uh then working as a group uh you know one of the one of the key things there is you're gonna have to go to paper ballots we cannot do this again we've been fighting this electronic thing for you know two and a half decades uh and it's just bullshit uh the uh, uh the fact of the matter is is that they're spending so much money and so much time trying to resolve what actually happened hidden inside all this software and the machines and everything else. The machines were designed to uh, cook the vote. Oh, yeah. uh, that's why the intelligence agencies were on them in the beginning. So they mm -hmm. could uh, steal the vote and put in leaders they wanted in these other countries like these people had a free vote. Yep. And, uh, uh, you know, people think, well, we're just going to, fix the machine, fix the machine, fix the machine. You can't fix the stupid machine. Yeah, it's it's already fixed. It's rigged. Yeah. <laughs> you have to unrig that. That's right. Yeah. The only way to unrig the thing 
look, you know, it's, it's 65 floors from the top of the Trump in Vegas. I'm willing to go over there. They're doing a construction site next door. We can launch those Dominion voting machines mm -hmm. off the roof. Did you ever do those water balloons when you're a kid to take the surgical uh, uh, stuff and you take a, you know, a grandma's uh, a strainer and you put the water balloon in there and you hook mm -hmm. it onto the surgery and you can launch those fucking balloons. Oh. I mean, <laughs> That's what we need to do with those Dominion machines. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, they're, right. they're, they're good I for mean, that. Get, that's get the only video. thing they're good for. Because <laughs> they, they got that construction site right there. Yeah. I can hit. <laughs> <laughs> it could be so much fun. We could have a blast with those stupid things. Because that's all they are as boat anchors around our life. And uh, so mm. we need to go. Uh, we need to go deal with them accordingly. And uh, agreed. Uh, after you know, we've tried to figure out what they, they did inside of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things, uh, uh, a certain uh, operating system was found inside uh, also, you know, uh, of, of the Dominion machines. Mm -hmm. it, one of the things is they open the machine up and then you look at the board. And of course, it's all, uh, you know, considered to be uh, proprietary. And so we're supposed to have a free vote with hidden uh, mechanisms and uh, you know certain ways that they do it that we can't actually see because it's it's proprietary to the people that own the Dominion machine. So then you can't actually see what's going on. You pop it open, you look at it, and you go, "Well, what the hell's that?" Oh yeah, that's a Bluetooth. Well, they're not supposed to be hooked up to the internet. No, no, no. I don't. That's probably for other applications. It's on the board, but we don't actually use that in this machine. Mm -hmm. It's just there because we get the boards cheaper when they have that on there. You know, it, it, you know, do not look at the man. Do not look at the chip behind the green curtain. <laughs> exactly. You know, in Arizona right now, they, they can't come up with the routers or the passcodes, you know, for those uh, Dominion machines. So there's definitely some uh, silliness going on there. Well, of course, uh, uh, Biden uh, people are being uh, lobbied to come in and mm -hmm. bring the feds in and shut the whole thing down because it's, mm -hmm. you know, somehow it's wrong to try to figure out what happened with the vote and what's right. going on. And of course, we know what actually happened. It's just about uh, continuing the cover up. And, uh, you know, these people that are acting like uh, we're somehow doing something wrong revisiting uh what happened in that vote okay so let's, let's just think about this for a second mike mm -hmm. if even if we said no we're not going to turn anything around from 2020 but with all the concern of what happened and back and forth and even having to do the recount and everything else uh let me ask you this wouldn't it make sense now that the vote's over and it's done, and Biden is president. Wouldn't it make kind of sense if there's people that are concerned that we go in forensically and just prove beyond any doubt, nope, it was all fair, and let's rip those fucking machines apart, every last part and piece. Let's just lay them all out on a great big table. You know, we get the picnic table out there, and we'll just get all the stuff out there, and all these genius computer guys can look at it and go, hey, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> i'm just surprised yeah. you haven't burned all that stuff you know like that movie the last emperor where he asked the uh the monks that were in charge of his his little forbidden city there uh what can i see the books for the last you know thousand years and they burned the temple so, so yeah i'm, I'm surprised yeah. they haven't burned this stuff i'm glad they haven't somebody's you know keeping a good eye on it so that hopefully it continues well, I mean, that's part of the whole point. If, uh, if the feds come in, they're going to confiscate all this stuff. You know, one of the things I, I think I might have mentioned it even on your show or somewhere out there, you know, uh, down in Arkansas, when uh, we were uh, complaining at Tower Space about what was going on with the uh, drug running out of South America coming in through uh, uh, the South there and, and the uh, Memphis Mafia was running all that stuff mm -hmm. with CIA supervision. You know, stuff like uh, Mina, which mm -hmm. for all that Mina is this one place there, you don't realize that you just look right on down the runway and keep looking and out in the distance, you know what that is? That's the largest military base in the continental U.S. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's in Oklahoma. It's not in Arkansas. Yeah, but it's right there. <laughs> hmm. 
So who's who's not paying attention to the flights? You know, the guys the guys are communicating on these aircraft coming in like uh, it's not uh, being seen by the military right there, monitoring yeah. everything in the airspace. Ah, bullshit. Anyway, so they called the Senate um, Banking Committee, I believe it was at the time, uh, because they have a lot of leverage. There's a lot going on there. And so uh, they subpoenaed and wanted all the hard copy materials from all the various investigations that were going on. You had IRS down there, you had DEA, you had uh, all the local policing agencies and state agencies. Um, you had uh, uh, the, uh, oh, uh, uh, guns and everybody else people alcohol, alcohol tobacco and firearms people right you had ATF multiple members. agencies atf uh that had all sorts of data on what was going on on the drug and money and everything else coming through arkansas and by the way anybody that thinks that was just a bunch of uh riffraff do you know where the largest brokerage firm in the world outside of new york was located hmm. Little Rock, Arkansas. It's oh not God. Germany. It's not city of London. It's not Tokyo. It's Little Rock, Arkansas. Yeah, the largest <laughs> off Wall Street brokerage firm in the world. Uh, hmm. Yeah, and uh, uh, you know we got guys there that are that are you know it all goes back to uh, ad for Arkansas Development Finance Authority and all the various uh, similar finance authorities in the various states mm -hmm. and the money laundering that was the black black bag money that was going on for a lot of the mischief that's going on even today mm -hmm. with all the payoffs and these political operations related to the drug drugs related to these three letter agencies and their bullshit not mm -hmm. just here in the US but around the world uh, MI6 uh, worst to the worst uh, Mossad, mm -hmm. etc. So, coming back full circle, the Senate uh, Banking Oversight Committee wanted to have hearings on all of uh, what was going on down there yeah, when we're during Whitewater and we're looking at what's who's been up to what mischief. So they um, subpoenaed all the original hard copy evidence. Well, when you testify, you have to have the original hard copy material so that you can testify from original stuff, your notes and things like that, uh, the records that you generated. And so all the various investigators at all the various uh, federal and state agencies and county agencies were required to turn in all their original notes and material. The the tail numbers on all the aircraft that were running the drugs for all the uh, big companies, names that you would recognize instantly and the players that were involved here, very big players. I don't feel like getting a lawsuit this week, so I won't, won't mention them because they were never convicted. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I mean. But someday, uh, someday they're going to be exposed, it's soon. Coming. Well, I've said it before. It's out there mm -hmm. if you want to go find it. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, they, they'd be very whiny and damage their advertising campaign. Mm -hmm. Brah! <laughs> it's easy to be a bazillionaire when you get loans of money and you don't have to pay interest on it and you don't have to pay tax on it. You know, when you get a loan, Crazy. you don't pay taxes on the loan. So these mm -hmm. corporations are bringing in their laundered drug money. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they're, they're buying uh, um, bonds for these development bonds for state of arkansas and they're loaning the money in for you know they're they're buying the bonds from out of the country with their drug money uh mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. from all these island locations and then the governors of these states loan them back their money uh uh but now it's laundered it's clean it's clear and it's a development bond and so you can go build all the franken whatever hooches you want to grow whatever you want to grow mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, build airports and airplanes and and fly stuff in from the other side of the world have it cost five times what it would cost for anybody else doesn't matter because you don't you aren't paying for all that and by the way when you get a loan and then you never pay it back you don't pay interest on a loan you pay interest on your profits so they're getting all this money and they never pay any of it back ADFA wasn't getting any money back. Neither was uh, uh, Nebraska, Kentucky, all these other kind of uh, states, their development finance loans uh, were never getting paid back.
It was just free cash. You and I can't get by like that, but they can. You know, it's not a fair, well, how are these corporations getting all this money to do all this shit? Well, what do you think they're doing? They're getting it for free. And there's yeah. a collusion. It's not the government doing it, but there's people colluding inside the government that are uh, looking the other way. So and, all and some the of these hard- corporations, as, as you and I know very, very well, are just fronts. They don't even care if they make money because oh, they're just laundering money and other things. Totally fronts. <laughs> totally fronts. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, all the big ones that we even talk about all the time, you know, uh, Zuckerberg didn't invent Facebook. You know, go sue me, fucking Zuckerberg. Exactly. You kidding me? Oh, yeah. yeah let's have that Absolutely. conversation. Let's have that mm-hmm. discovery. Okay. <laughs> you know, so, so anyway, they get all the hard copy from all the various investigative agencies and they ship it all over there to uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma City. It's mm. all sitting there. It's the federal facility there at the Murrah building. Mm. And it's waiting to be shipped to Washington, D.C., but they get it in one place. Well, it wasn't in one place in Arkansas. You couldn't find a place in Arkansas. You just put on the plane, fly it to D.C. No, we got to put it over there next door in Oklahoma. It's right over there, just across the border. So it's like the military base. And then they uh, uh, turn around. And uh, while it's sitting there waiting to be shipped by whatever means necessary up to Washington, D.C. for the hearings that are going to happen, kaboom! What happened to all the evidence? Oh, yeah. What horrible timing. That's so sad. (laughs) It's amazing. So all the evidence goes up. What a coincidence, right? Yeah. Mm. And now all the guys can't testify and all that. So anyway, um, that's the kind of mischief that, uh, that happens out over time now i will tell you this right now even today amazingly a lot of stuff has been collected and it didn't get blown up when they wanted it to oh yeah it's a miracle (laughs) there's some people out there that might mm -hmm. think everything's all over and you think about these voting machines and it's all digital and everything one thing about stealing the vote digitally is that when you're transferring the data all over kingdom come all over the planet there's good guys that track that stuff and bad guys but sometimes the good guys are watching when the bad guys do all the transferring and we have really good data that we get on exactly who was involved. And then you have actual real guys. Sometimes they're in the right place to observe it mm-hmm. and be part of it even right. and be able to testify firsthand as well as mm-hmm. the digital forensic data. Now, and that then- human, that human <laughs> intelligence that you're talking about <laughs> is very, very valuable. It's even more valuable, I think, than the actual like video evidence and so forth. Cause I and you can have a lot of information inside us that we don't share anywhere else, but when it's time, oh. it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's some people about to have a very bad day. Mm-hmm. So you look at that, that whole situation down there in Arizona, and uh, they want to come in there and they want to take – all the stuff and you know some feds show up and some biden people show up and they're gonna stop this whole thing and it's tracks now the one thing that's happening by the way so they're talking about having to shut this down in a few days that it's going to be all over with but yet they're not getting cooperation on completing some stuff they can't find some critical things so uh what the deal is they have like some three day event or four day event there in the Coliseum where it's being counted. Mm -hmm. And uh, so would they continue the counting in another room, consolidate things or just uh, move them aside and then come back in a few days and restart and keep going with the count. And so there's these questions out there, how this is going to go. The drama isn't over. It actually is uh, supposed to be, uh originally in the original contract as i recall it was 60 days or something Mm. which based on when they started the count mid-april would amazingly with the the pause of a few days uh potentially end up being just about uh the uh, 21st or so of june which is the longest day in the year (laughs) Mm. dark to light (laughs) interesting so we're we're having a little bit of fun out here and uh, you know uh, by the way as far as uh, guys uh, pat Byrne and i got a chance to spend some time together over the weekend and uh, you know he this whole situation where he was involved in 
you know, his part where they were trying to do this setup on the uh, Russia investigation and find all the ways that uh, President Trump, when he was still candidate Trump, was somehow colluding with the Russians in this Maria Bettina mm -hmm. situation. Um, this very nice gal, very pro uh, Americans, US, um, was in this very difficult catch 22 situation. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Pat's written about it, talked about it pretty extensively, but there's still stuff that is not been made public and the reality is uh i think pat's about to uh have some fun exposing some of these people you know mm. you know what's about we to happen and what's been happening have you noticed how uh over and over just like i said over the last uh, couple of months it's like biden goes out somewhere in public mm -hmm. Like, uh, gonna go get on to an aircraft that you know he's going somewhere on, and he gets on the aircraft and flies somewhere. And everybody points out, Hey, I don't think he's got his pants on. What are you talking about? It's not Air Force One, they're pantsing him right there in plain sight. It's not Air Force One, he's the president of the United States. Well, he might be president of Congress as far as Congress is concerned, he might be president as far as the courts are concerned, but mm. somebody over where the military decides to make designations of aircraft in the air somebody isn't pushing the right button somebody isn't punching in the right letters is not air force one no remember when biden showed up for the uh, inauguration that oh, nobody yeah. could go to okay he flew in on a private aircraft mm -hmm. you know he think about this the other day he's climbing on the plane and I saw one of these booths, it was hysterical, where uh, he's tripping up the stairs. He trips, <laughs> somebody had done a spoof, uh, he tripped like three or four times. And so he has uh, Trump out in the golf course, he's hitting the ball, he goes wailing out there, Doy, it's biting on the head. It was so funny, I just I laughed. That one. That was good oh my Classic. gosh, that was funny. You know, and then Biden would get back up and he'd go up another step or two and he'd trip. And uh, uh, going into the airplane. Um, so then, okay, so the guy can't walk up the stairs. Okay, well, he's a little challenged, whatever. That's fine. But then, just a few days later, Biden is again climbing up. The, they should put him on a freaking forklift thing, you know, with like a pallet on it and a handrail around it and just <laughs> lift him up to the side of the plane, right? <laughs> no, Mr. President, just stand right here. We'll take care of it. You know, so what do they do? And they actually have like two Marine guards, one on each side, just to hold him steady so he won't trip while he's being lifted up to the top of the plane, keep the chain, you know, across, uh, like one of the kiddie rides at Disney or something. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> he's 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 going over to get on the aircraft, not Air Force One. <laughs> He's going, he, he could be getting onto a sop with camel. He could be going hang gliding. He could be freaking kite uh, surfing behind the boat. It would be Air Force One if he was the president as far as the military was concerned. But he's, he's uh, going up the steps, but this time to show how strong and resilient he is mm -hmm. and how tough he is. You know, right. you think, you know, because we got to compete. You know, Biden, he's out there riding bareback on lions you know, through the jungle, throwing spears at the natives back, you know, catching their spears and throwing them back at them, you know. So we got to show our president's just as tough as the commies, okay? <laughs> so Biden is carrying his own suitcase and his own umbrella up the stairs to get into the aircraft. Did you see that? That's just right after he, could, he couldn't climb up the stairs normally. Now he's got to carry his own suitcase umbrella to show us how strong and tough he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I you used know, to love love those uh, videos of uh, Putin, you know, riding bareback, like, you know, he's like hunting and, you know, he's out in the boats and everything. And then Obama, after a while, Obama had to start hitting him because they were like, you know, making fun of uh, Obama. And now... Oh, Biden right. Biden can't keep up either. <laughs> well, you know the 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 thing is is that um, those are not normal protocols. 
uh, one of the ones I mentioned the other day too on a couple of shows, oh, yeah. uh, when he went to go out to his car to the beast. And so he's walking out there and here's this guy. Uh, he's not even wearing decent floor shine shoes, let alone a nice bit and polished black leather shoe, which is normal. This guy is supposed to be his uh, secret service security detail. So he's walking along in his brown Walmart uh, uh, loafers and all scuffed up and uh, uh, they're walking out to the beast. Now, the protocol is, you know, part of the reason, like with the suitcase and, and the umbrella, it's not just that you don't want the president to look like he's, you know, the the uh, uh, salesman for Watkins, you know, products or something, you know, hi, would you like to buy some vanilla? <laughs> here's a brush would you like to buy one of those you know you don't want the president looking like that he's got all the world leaders are watching so you know he doesn't carry his own bag onto the plane mm -mm. you know they don't have a luggage compartment i check my luggage at the franken thing when i'm going on the plane normally so mm -hmm. he's got to carry his own luggage and what about the umbrella you've never seen like a marine guard or secret service holding the umbrella part of the reason for that is it's a safety issue in case of an attack in case of an event they don't want the president encumbered. They want him to be able to rapidly, smoothly get to a safe location. So he's walking out to the beast and the door on the beast is closed. There's no guy on the door. Hmm. The guy that's running the front passenger seat is usually the guy there at the door. His whole entire job is to make sure that the door is open long before the president gets there. Mm -hmm. And then once the presence inside the doors closed properly. And by the way, if you remember, like when, when Reagan was shot, uh, the guys, the doors open, the guys are all right there. They pick the president up, you know, like a duffel bag and throw him in the car and land on top of him to make sure he's protected from any bullets flying in the air. Mm -hmm. The door has to be open seconds count. If the president's standing there waiting for him to get the door open, fumbling while the bullets are flying, uh, you might get hit three more times, mm -hmm. 10 times. If he's got, somebody's got an automatic while well, you're fumbling with the door. Biden's walking out there. Nobody's at the door. Nobody's got the door open. He's with the guy with the Franken Walmart uh, scuffed up shoes, brown, walking out to the car, waiting for somebody to get the door open. <laughs> okay. Hello. Doesn't Nobody. Happen. Yeah. Nobody that's in the industry has ever seen anything like it. And by the way, governments around the world, if the president has a sniffle and he's rubbing his nose for a second, there's 10 analysis, uh, analysts looking at every angle. Uh, does he have a flu? Does he have a cold? Does he have COVID? Does he got cancer? Is he dying? You know, uh, is there something in the air? You know, what's going on? They're trying to figure out why the president had a sniffle. And uh, is it going to affect some policy? Is it going to affect what's going on in the world somehow? So, you know, when the president is struggling, he's, he's not going upstairs right there. He's carrying his own bags. Nobody's opening the door. Governments around the world, militaries, intelligence agencies, analysts are all trying to figure out what in the world is going on here in America. Yeah. And uh, who's really in charge? Mm -hmm. Now, you've probably heard it too. So I'm not speaking out of school completely, but, you know, there's been a bit of a scuttlebutt about, and uh, it's been pretty widely discussed. So we'll, th we'll just discuss it for a second. <laughs> what the fuck just happened over at the Pentagon a few weeks ago? I heard about that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, there's a few variations on the story. Mm -hmm. And uh, so let's just talk hypothetically for a minute, because uh, we want to stay in the hypothetical zone. Um, uh, if there's some pushback back and forth within the military ranks in the general staff or in the flag officers, general staff being generals. Yep. Okay. Uh, flag officers being admirals mm -hmm. and uh, uh you know, high ranking officers in both locations. Cause you know, if you're a general or an admiral, you've got a loyal crew that tends to go with you. And uh, if guys don't like the guy they're with, they're looking for a way to, you know, get to somebody else's staff. So tend to have people that are loyal to you that uh, build around you. So if you have guys going one way or the other, they usually follow, uh, 
in their chain of command. And mm -hmm. so the question is, is there some uh, division there within the general staff or the flag officers? And these types of stories are getting a little more frequent. Mm -hmm. Now, as I've explained to your audience and other audiences, what's, uh, what's part of what's going on here? Uh, the Congress certified, and of course you, you remember famously how we had people you know, you know, shutting down their subscription to, to Michael because Juan said that Biden was gonna be president. You remember that? Oh my gosh, they freaking just about stripped a gear. Uh, and I said, Biden's gonna be president. Okay. And, uh, you know, get over it, get a clue. So yes, Congress certified Biden's president. The courts agreed. A crooked Congress says Biden's president. They don't wanna look at the vote. You know, see no evil, hear no evil, say no evil. Mm -hmm. The courts, yep, nope, nope, we're not going to look at this stuff. Not because they looked at the data. This is where people are mistaken. Because they didn't uh, want to see it. They said there's no standing. They said, now nah, these states, they can't go with Texas because they don't have standing. Doesn't allow for it. Uh, through all these legal uh, maneuvers, the case never actually gets heard on the merits of the vote fraud or the uh, deception, this digital Pearl Harbor, uh, an attack on America by another means, another method uh, digitally, instead of with nuclear weapons, you take control of the country uh, by uh, taking control of its government with your uh, Manchurian candidates. Well, the issue, and I explained it to your audience previously, but think about, think about in this current moment, this current light, um, always the military defers to civilian authority, civilian command. And so it's there, you know, to protect the constitution and the Republic, the constitution being the contract with the American people and the Republic being the nation of states, uh, this union of states that uh, makes us strong. And so what happens is that, uh, uh, we have a military that is stepping aside, letting all the civilians do their thing and whoever they've elected, whoever they say, this is the person that uh, we want to be president, commander in chief. Um, okay, well, then he's in command. The problem is what people have failed to grasp is that the military does not act their protocols are not to act while the civilian government is supposed to be acting unless something bad happens, like uh, they're not, you know, maybe under command. It's a Manchurian candidate situation, a, a captured situation somehow. So as long as the Congress and the courts had options to uh, look at the vote, and call something in if something wasn't going right. Uh, the military is just standing by. On January 19th of 2021, the Director of National Intelligence presented a report on election interference in the previous election from November 3rd. Only problem was that report was like 33 days old. The report was supposed to be presented on the 18th of December, mm -hmm. 45 days after the election, but they didn't do that. <clears throat> they had a little internal scuffle or disagreement, so they uh, didn't present the report on time. Didn't get presented till the day before the presidency is supposed to be handed off to the new elected person, Trump mm -hmm. for second term, or in this case, it was going to be Biden. And uh, then you have less than 24 hours for Congress or the courts to look at what's there, say, well, looks like there could have been some interference, some fraud, some uh, scamming, and slow it down, pause, or do something. <clears throat> Instead, it was full steam ahead. Now, the military has no 
investigative angle to come in and do anything related to the vote up to that moment in time. Mm -hmm. Then what happened was uh, when they swore Biden in, a crooked Congress and the courts swore Biden in as the president and said, now <clears throat> hand over the uh, authorities for the operation of the military and the nuclear keys to Biden, uh, the military went, um, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is there a problem here? Because we also are privy to the report. It says there was foreign interference. We have all this stuff that's going on. And oh, by the way, I think we'll just hold tight for a minute because it does something doesn't seem right. And so, uh, yeah, we're not going to pick up Biden with a military aircraft. He can come in on, uh, you know, uh, one loan to him from from one of his benefactors. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when he gets there, uh, they don't, you know, they don't hand him the suitcase. Uh, all he gets is some Toys R Us colored uh, plastic keys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, how you doing? <laughs> okay. And then I click the click button. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what you've been watching is the military has not at the highest levels in a certain strata not all of the military, but where it counts mm -hmm. at the very highest levels. Remember, Cheyenne Mountain, NORAD, Strategic Air Command mm -hmm. are still locked up tight as a drum. Wow. Our, our Trident defenses locked up tight as a drum. Mm -hmm. The reality is um, that uh, what, we're, what we're really seeing here is we're seeing a situation where um, uh, there is some kind of a uh, disagreement within the military on whether or not we should hand over the keys to Biden. Now, the military on January 20th, at the time that Biden was sworn, put his hands on the Franken, you know, whatever it was that he did, because there's some questions of what was actually in there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so when he did that, and the military was required to hand over the keys to the new commander in chief. Did that actually occur functionally? I mean, you can have the briefcase there. The briefcase is just a handshake. The briefcase doesn't actually do anything except allow for the generals who are, you know, say, say somebody's firing missiles in America, sub launched. Uh, missiles are on their way in. Mm -hmm. uh, the satellites detect uh, uh, heat signature that's uh, consistent with uh, aluminized rocket fuel. And uh, now everybody goes uh, red and uh, we're under attack. So uh, fairly instantaneously, uh, somebody's communicating with the briefcase uh, and they're giving advisories. This is what we believe is going on. Here's what's at risk. Here's where it's pointed. Uh, what do you want us to do? Uh, and by the way, during the Clinton administration, uh, the Clinton administration changed the rules and said, well, we'll absorb a first strike. And then we'll strike back, believing, you know, that the missiles uh, wouldn't be very accurate. Mm -hmm. And so and we might we didn't want to, to start World War Four, uh, World War Three. We already beat the Russians, the commies. We did it war by another means. Mm -hmm. Hey, you didn't get the memo. Think about what I'm just told you there, Michael. Almost nobody's caught this. The Soviet Union was defeated in a war and we didn't fire nuclear missiles. The Soviet Union doesn't exist anymore. We fought World War III by another means. Mm -hmm. We took them out on multiple fronts, the last being on the ruble. Mm -hmm. And they don't exist anymore. The Russian people survived. A new government was constituted, but we won World War III. So we're in World War IV potentially right now, war by another means. And what is somebody trying to do with this? They've attacked us using methods by another means on multiple fronts. When we took down the Soviet Union, we did it on multiple fronts. One of them was we ran the price of oil down through our various partners so low, their biggest source of revenue was oil, mm -hmm. that we collapsed their economy. Right. 
took all of their uh, funds away. Then we went after them on the religious issues uh, up there in the uh, satellite uh, uh, states and uh, where they were being you know, extremely over the top on the way they ran their people on the religious issues, uh, Jews, Catholics, Christians, the whole schmear. Uh, what was you know portrayed as the trade unions, which was also true. There was a big issue there, uh, like Walensa, like Walensa, and and that whole group of people up there in Poland. In fact, I just got to spend time with a doctor who grew up in Poland during that era, and now is a pediatrician. Just moved down to Florida from New York. Uh, very, just a great person. We were talking about that whole era and what it was like, and. Uh, uh, so on the religious thing, the, the people uh, were undermined from the inside. And uh, there was a few other things that were done, but uh, with the Afghanistan situation and right. uh, uh, getting them to throw arms and people into a war that could never win mm -hmm. and uh, us supplying stuff surreptitiously that really taxed them again. And then finally, uh, the ruble situation and uh, nobody counterfeited anybody's rubles they just happened to have some generals that were greedy and uh, sent rubles outside the country for hard currency such as dollars marks yen bola etc and then when there wasn't money to buy rubles anymore well we just sent rubles back <laughs> it was their rubles <laughs> okay we didn't do anything wrong we just sent their rubles back wow. boom <laughs> Ma masterful on uh, you you don't you always provide amazing insights oh my so the, God. Uh, the military side is is very very amazing because uh you well you're coming in and, and say some stuff so i can give you my background i've been looking at you know the things that have been happening with uh mr biden and uh it doesn't match up like you're saying as far as like the uh there's no air force one and all these different things uh, he doesn't have a protection detail. I have been part of protection details a lot. And I can tell you that's a big, that's a big red flag that he doesn't have one. So uh, you, you just spelled it all out masterfully. Thank you. Well, and then I was having my cookie and it's really good. Oh yeah. Good. Um, <laughs> Glad to talk a little bit. So you get that in. I know, I know you like I didn't, to run. I didn't get to eat today and I, I had to have a little bite to eat after a, good, good. you know, you don't want me to follow. Get that blood sugar. Pass out. Pass out. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody made me a very nice cookie, a keto uh, cookie, by the way. Sweet. So oh, very good, very good. Um, but uh, think about this, Jaco. You've got um, a situation where Biden's people, Biden himself, they've got to get control, reins, uh, rein this in somehow. You know, um, there's ample evidence that a component of the secret service and a component of the military have not agreed to and backed biden as the president of the united states mm -hmm. functionally now where people have to think about this the president of the united states supervises manages he's the executive like the ceo of a corporation uh, the day-to-day -day operations of the various government agencies, um, you know, internal policing, uh, FBI, Justice Department, um, you know, uh, the Treasury stuff, uh, you know, the, the banking, things like that, you know, how the states are administering laws and, and you know, what federal money is going to go to support which programs and what, you know, we as a nation need to work together and, and coordinate the states and the senators and everybody else to do whatever to work together to get something done. Okay. And so he's the CEO sitting at the head of the board table trying to figure this stuff out. That's not the same as commander in chief. Mm-hmm. The commander in chief is head of the military. Different hat. So you take one hat off and you put the other one off if the country's under attack or whatever. Michael, the country is under a digital attack, war by another means, yeah. and have been. The whole event leading up to the 11 3 election. And by the way, just like when we did what we did, 
think of what America has been under attack with multiple things. It's a big country. There's a lot going on. You're not going to knock it down with just one little thing. So what else you got cooking? COVID. Mm -hmm. That's big. It doesn't turn the world on its ear. The economic side as a result of that and the political side, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the chaos, the not knowing what's going on. Let me tell you one other thing. The other day, uh, and you've probably seen it. In fact, I, I did a T-shirt, put it on on my uh, uh, 107 Daily uh, over there for people to to get just for fun. Um, and it was uh, uh, Strategic Air Command. They have a communication system. So what happened was uh, in this communication system, one of the guys had one of the devices. Supposedly went home with it. It's you know classified. A device and he sets it on the counter and his little kid uh, gets the device and he's punching in random letters and numbers in the device okay so i, I don't know it could have been i actually it could have been biden okay <laughs> random numbers <laughs> going in and saying, oh, yeah, is it, does this launch anything <laughs> track time hello anybody over there okay what about this button <laughs> you know I can't find a place to put my key. This is the twice the risk key. It's the purple one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hold on. Which one's yo? You're supposed Look. to get pudding today. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so everybody in the world, all the other governments in the world, look, the Chinese, the Russians, the Israelis, the Germans, the Brits, the fucking Brits, they're all watching everything that happens. Mm -hmm. So here, Strategic Air Command, our nuclear forces over their open line that everybody gets to see, but it's still kind of a coded communication, comes this random group of letters. So some of the people watching this go, whoa, what's that all about? So they take the group of letters and they put it into these decoding tools, like somebody accidentally put an encoded message out over the open line. So they have these, you know, uh, Toys R Us decoding tools that come up with the most obvious likely answer. And the first answer that comes out of the decoding tool, Q acquitted. <laughs> <laughs> Oh That's the most likely answer. Q acquitted. <laughs> okay. Half hour later, uh, Strat come, comes out. Oh, oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, we accidentally let the I, I, we accidentally let somebody's kid play with the device and they punch those numbers. <laughs> Ignore the man behind the curtain. Ignore oh, yeah. what just happened. No, nothing relevant. Okay. So now move forward. That got everybody's attention. Paying attention to that. Okay. Think about what happened next just like going up the stairs and he's tripping up the stairs. And then a few days later, now he's got to carry his suitcase up to show us all how good shape he's in. That little event over at Stratcom got the whole world aware that, you know, Stratcom was in the news and more people are paying attention. So the next thing that comes out a few days later was a advisory. And the advisory says, don't expect a linear response from an enemy who may feel threatened if they believe it's the only way to save as much life as possible and to protect their position. Mm. Now, most people read that as though, uh, you know, Ukraine and everybody's pushing on the Russians. The Russians had this huge buildup, bigger than back in 2014. Mm. They had this huge buildup. Um, uh, over there on the border of Russia. And uh, Putin had, you know, brought everybody in. They're having this huge, huge thing. Uh, you know, supposedly just a training exercise, but it's huge. Hmm. What people didn't catch was this. It wasn't a warning that the Russians might nuke somebody if they felt threatened. They didn't feel threatened. We weren't doing anything. They're the ones doing stuff. Hello. U.S. forces are not coordinating and cooperating with the NATO forces right now at many levels. Mm -hmm. And there's this 
sense in various governments around the world, including over there with Putin, that maybe we aren't paying close enough attention. Maybe we're in a little turmoil, a little disarray here because our uh, general staff and flag officers might have a little bit of uh, confusion going on and uh, there's no president. We might be a headless creature here. We might've been decapitated because our government's divided right now. Hmm. So maybe this is a good time for a little adventure into the Ukraine. The real warning, you know, we're usually fairly predictable. It may not sound like we're that predictable, but the reality is, you know, we're not going to nuclear war lightly. We don't want to do that sort of thing. And so most people think of America and we're fairly linear. Linear, just it's a smooth road up. It's a smooth, predictable road down. It might go up a little more or a little less, but it's, you know, it's fairly predictable. It's fairly linear. The STRATCOM communication was, do not expect a linear response. If you think that our forces are not gonna be able to act, that the people that actually have the control to push the button, turn the key, will not act if they're actually for real pushed up against the wall, don't expect a linear response. We will use a tactical nuke and it talks specifically about tactical nukes wow Hmm. if needed if we're pushed you know what that was that was somebody getting a message to putin and everybody else and the chinese we got stuff going on all over the place oh yeah uh you think you can mess with us right now because we're in a decapitated position and our president isn't actually got control of our military don't expect a linear response. You push us, we'll push back, and it won't be what you expect. Who's in control of the nuclear arsenal? What did Nancy want to do shortly after Biden entered the presidency? She said she wanted to pull control of the nuclear command forces mm-hmm. under mm-hmm. the direct authority of the Congress. Now, why would she want to do that at exactly that time? Is it because Biden was fully, uh, wasn't fully uh, in control or couldn't be depended on, or a Harris might not be able to, or Michael? Because they were trying to force the military's hand. Oh, yeah. Is that what was really going on? Because mm-hmm. people in the upper reaches in the command of the nuclear forces this upper strata, a very precise, specific strata of the military commanding the nuclear arsenal and beyond, doesn't just end there, uh, weren't under the control of Biden. And she was trying to come up with a legislative way to capture that control and force Mm -hmm. the hand of the people in the upper reaches of our military to hand over the keys. She saw, she thought she might get somebody that's on the edge to come in and and rescue that. And it didn't happen. So that's that's brilliant the way you put that out. Well, they thought that they could get the American people behind it. Like it was somehow going to make us safer Mm -hmm. to have, you know, a couple of hundred, Congress people that can't agree whether or not to, you know, if you have a stream going down beside the sidewalk into the drain uh, thing, uh, is that a, you know, is that a salmon spawning stream and we should regulate it and uh, restrict fishing in the uh, drainage ditches or something? You know, what the, you know, they can't figure that out. They can't decide whether, you know, they're going to spend, you know, 50 million or 500 billion on transgender studies, you know, for four year olds. And you're going to get them in a time of war, uh, you know, the Chinese or the Russians or somebody else is doing some horrible thing. Well, I don't know if we should nuke them or not. I mean, they they nuked uh, Hawaii and L.A., but I mean, that's not the whole country. I think it was an accident. Uh, and it might just be because they wanted to get some of the, you know, trade uh, lowered uh, between those places or something or increased. So I don't know. They thought they were plowing ground. You know, you can't get Congress to agree to that. And you're going to take the instantaneous control 
that is this hair trigger. Um, the way the nuclear stuff has worked for a very long time is mutually assured destruction. You pull the button, push the button and try to nuke us. We push the button and nuke you back. We both end up uh, as losers. It's tic-tac-toe. Mm -hmm. Nobody wins. So you got this situation where all of a sudden, Nancy's, the, the way we're going to fix this is we're going to get even more chaotic and confused. And the, and the other side doesn't see an executive with will that's willing to do what has to be done in a critical moment. You know, where does that make sense anywhere in the world, especially the way that it's been played for a long time? That's a pretty big decision. You're not going to just turn it over in a few days with Nancy saying, yeah, we, we've got to take over this. You know, there was other stuff going in the background. Where it counts, at the upper reaches, that upper strata of the military, they have not agreed that Biden was legally elected president of the United States, that they have not agreed that the foreign interference was not enough to change the outcome of the election. And so they did their own analysis and it didn't start till January 20th when Biden was sworn, even though Congress and even though the courts said, no, no, he's president. They weren't so free uh, with their decision making. And fortunately for America, fortunately for the world, because president of the United States controls uh, a lot of stuff, money and everything else. Commander in chief sends troops and weapons and can push the button in the right situation. Um, the whole world is on the line holding its breath for what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. The military did not agree to go along with the result of this uh, Pearl Harbor, this digital Pearl Harbor in America. And remember, you know, for example, uh, Japan took the Philippines and MacArthur had to yield and leave the country. Uh, and some of the things that happened in the Philippines, I mean, oh my gosh, uh, I had a, a friend years ago that was, uh, he passed away probably 25 years ago now, but uh, he was there uh, in the Philippines when, and, and became prisoner. Yeah. And it had a was great beyond horrible. Japan, death march, yeah. yeah, it was just uh, beyond comprehension. Um, and yet uh, we had to march back mm -hmm. over time, get control, consolidate our position, go back and go back and get the Philippines back. You know, if we lose within the Congress and the courts, we may have lost a lot of ground. Did we lose everything? And I would contend to you that uh, that's the whole point. The military, even portions of the military may have fallen under some uh, uh convoluted, captured right. uh, vote system, this digital Pearl Harbor against America, this war by another means. But fortunately, where it counts in the upper strata within our uh, uh, last line of defense, the most critical one, where the officers are sworn, vetted, think in a much uh, different way, they didn't uh, concede. And so what's happening now is that pushback is now starting to come back. Okay, you lost the Philippines. Well, it's not permanent. We're going back yet. You lost some portion of America. Well, it may not be as permanent as they'd like to say. They're screaming bloody murder. Watch what's going on over there in Maricopa County. These people want to come in and try to lock it down, close us off from the rest of that data, not provide stuff still. Um, you know. Uh, there's now discussions to get uh, a recount, even in Clark County, where it still hasn't been agreed to, but we're not done. So mm -hmm. uh, how long does that march take? What's going to go on in, in the meantime? What revelations from insiders and digital data actually can still come to bear? What stuff from the guys that were working right there inside that may have put little uh, uh, landmines in there, you, these guys going to step on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just had some of those discussions over the last week. Uh, those guys are about to come out. You know, there's an interesting thing. Um, May 11th, uh, that's uh, 
five times 11, 55. I've said many times, you know, five is the number of death to enemies and defense. That's why the Pentagon has five sides. It has an occult thing. Five is the number of grace to God's people and uh, redemption. Uh, it's silver, it's the cross, it's uh, redeemed. We're coming up on a five by five moment. It'll be interesting to see what happens with some of these revelations. It's not over on a certain day. You know, let me let me ask you this. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so a lot of people got all wound up, Michael. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. When a president leaves office, is he still referred to as president or is he now just another citizen, never referred to as president the rest of his life? He's just, you know, you know, is Trump still president? President for life. Um, president for life. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, now, Biden has been certified as president by the courts. Uh, Congress has agreed to this whole thing. Uh, so you got a president there, but you really have uh, two presidents. It's just mm -hmm. one is functionally over uh, the uh, uh, corporation, the Fed side, the whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but if the military hasn't handed off, that's a different hat. That's commander in chief. So my question is, is Biden, while the, the courts and the Congress can say, he is commander in chief. He is commander in chief. He is, he is, he is, he is. Look, he's got the keys. Pull the keys out. Biden, pull the keys out of your pocket now. Look at these. <laughs> these are the Toys R Us keys we gave Toys R Us keys, yep. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that one, he was chewing on that one. That one doesn't count. <laughs> you got big teeth. You know, usually those those are made for like little kids when they're gumming to death. Uh, uh, uh. Of course, he might be gumming it to death. I don't know. But, you know it's, it's a little, yeah, I think he was putting it in there. He's trying to turn it and turn it and turn it and broke the teeth. But anyway, um, okay. So is there some question if Biden is uh, actually being accepted where it counts? as commander in chief. And so now I come back to April 1st, you know, I did all these bets. So I was with one of my guys who's actually a uh, 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 general staff and uh, uh, you know, his wife was like, well, I think it's time for you to pay off. And uh, he tells her, he says, actually, I think he might've been right. That was nice. the end of the discussion there. Okay. Yeah, uh, and the reason is honestly, I love it. Yeah, the reason is, think about it. I also talked quite extensively for quite some time, a dual presidency. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do we have a dual presidency situation where part of the country, part of the um, government in this divided government moment is saying that Biden's president and another part of our government uh, uh, in this upper strata is saying uh, Trump won, mm -hmm. and he sh should be referred to respectfully as President Trump, whether you believe it or not, he is President Trump. He is President Trump, mm -hmm. but is he still supposed to be the guy that's commander in chief? And at what point, if the military, think about this, if the military didn't agree that the election was pulled off without interference, so then they do their own internal investigation that started on January 20th. That's the way the military code of justice is written. They do an investigation. They determine uh, what exactly happened. Was there foreign interference? They take the stuff that was accumulated from the uh, uh, Department of Homeland Security, but then they add the extra touch of their own uh, military intelligence that isn't even allowed in those areas because the Department of Homeland Security does not control the nuclear defenses. They don't have a Department of Homeland Nuclear Security, okay? And uh, that area where those investigations are done and that data, that last line of defense, that did not come under the scrutiny and get in those reports. And the military goes back and looks at all the other military intelligence that they may have on a situation like this. And at the end of it, if they concluded that there was foreign interference and it was sufficient to change the outcome of the election and that there's a treasonous, traitorous, 
uh, uh, component of those offices that certified and validated the vote over at Congress and the courts, then the military doesn't just uh, stand neutral endlessly. The way that the military code of justice is written, they're required to first secure the constitution, the contract with the American people and the Republic, the security of the states. Then as quickly as safely, reasonably possible, they restore lawful civilian authority to the position of commander in chief, commander in charge of all military forces. Now think about that. That's not the same as calling him president. It's just for the sake of running the military machine to recapture ground that was stolen from us, to protect the Constitution and Republic, that they recognize a commander in chief of military forces. They don't put that person in the presidency. They just recognize they're strictly solely who's running the military. And we don't do it as a banana republic. We don't run our country with generals. We're not a South American operation. If we don't like the way things go, a bunch of generals take over and they run the country. Or some one general comes in and becomes the guy that runs the country. The military code of justice says that they have to pick that person that's the representative constitutionally of the uh, uh, um, military forces. So in this situation, think about this, Michael. If you have forensic data that shows in this digital Pearl Harbor that another government or group of governments or businesses or some James Bond Zonian of mastermind had cooked the election and stolen it and put somebody else in there as a Manchurian candidate. Could be a clone, could be, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it could be computer generated at this point in time. We have, you know, uh, TV screen stuff that can generate images. You wouldn't know yep. if you're seeing the real thing or not. Okay. In mm -hmm. some advanced time, you know, now or some point in the future, you might not even see anything that's, that's real anywhere. Uh, uh, you know, because you trust what's on the TV, so they generate any image they want, show it to you. You wouldn't know if it's actually Biden or, you know, just a computer-generated uh, model. So if the military doesn't believe that whoever's at the suitcase, whoever's at the other end is real or is the correct, true represent re elected representative of the American people, and if they think that they can come up forensically with the correct data that proves who is the elected person that the American people uh, voted, then they would turn around and recognize that. Uh, might have taken some time, but that's what they would do. That's what the uh, Code of Justice says. Mm -hmm. But they don't just run it. They find that person. If they couldn't unscramble the egg, then they would turn around maybe and have to supervise uh, a, a revote. It might be just in those places where the vote was most uh, severely uh, screwed up, you know, maybe those five or six states where they did this huge vote fraud on the ballots and all that, if that was the case, and the digital vote. Uh, but that would be kind of uh, difficult. You probably have to do the whole country. But if you know what the outcome of the vote actually was before it was cooked, before the data was sent up through the satellite systems, uh, downloaded, changed, and sent back through downloaded back here on the vote machines and turned around. If you knew what it was before it was cooked, why would you do a revote? If you've got the forensic data and you've oh, yeah. got the eyewitnesses, the people who are hands-on, no, it would be another crime to then force the country to go through a revote. Remember, mm -hmm. while all this is going on, remember what happened in the Soviet Union that doesn't exist anymore because we killed it, shot it dead in a doornail? When they were in disarray, when their economy was toast, when the ruble was dropping in value, dropped 40% in a matter of months uh, in the black market, when uh, uh, you know, their leaders 
were getting accosted by their people because they just wanted to frank and feed their families. They're starving mm-hmm. to death. Yeah. And their industry wouldn't work. You couldn't build a toaster because you couldn't find the toaster cord. Oh, it's on a train going to Turkey, you know, for a few rubles for some mobsters. Uh, if America is convoluted, while you have that disarray, how did you, what happened back in the Bolshevik Revolution in the first place in the Soviet Union? The country went into some level of chaos, and when it came out the other side, it wasn't the good guys that people thought they were getting to get rid of the czar. It was an even worse crowd that was, was managing the chaos in the first place. These people that want to come save America from COVID, they want the chaos because they have a plan. The plan is they're going to destroy America because they got uh, they want to build a global empire and we're in the way. Mm-hmm. And if you got a leader that doesn't want to buy into this whole global thing, remember, Trump wasn't going along with all that green shit. And he wasn't going along with pulling the oil in from all over the world and keeping all those uh, monsters happy in Saudi Arabia, mm-hmm. the way they treat their women and kids. Uh, the slave owners in uh, Qatar, hello, that are buying and selling little kids. The people that uh, are running the slave markets in Tripoli after Hillary laughed Mm -hmm. because Gaddafi, we came, we saw he died. Okay, so then we opened up the slave bazaars in Tripoli again. Gaddafi didn't have slave bazaars. He stopped them. Okay, you can be mad at Gaddafi, but excuse me, no children being sold in downtown Tripoli. Mm -hmm. They are now. They are now. They are now. Your government made that happen. So at this moment in time, Michael, I'm asking mm. you, you've been around, you've been around people, you've seen the stuff, you've been there to security details, you've seen how things work. Mm. Um, is there enough evidence for you yet that Biden is not being acknowledged readily consistently to the world let alone here in the united states let alone to the american people let alone you know the media and everything else let alone to the dog catcher Mm -hmm. that he is actually functionally commander in chief even if in word and deed even they're acknowledging him as president do you think they're acknowledging him as commander in chief? Absolutely not. And uh, a- outright disrespecting him, in fact. And that's that's the signal. So I, I've been trying, I masterly done Juan again. I've been trying to like put this out in a way that I can. But uh, on our little break where you're getting your video back back up line, I, I talked about how I know things on a you know very deep level, you know, from 35 years of background, being an operator and being on the other side actually putting operation together uh, in the Intel side and so forth, you know stuff on a far, far deeper level. And it just absolutely blows me away because with that, you know, deeper level of uh, knowledge, you're able to like, you know, present something like this masterfully. So outstandingly done. Well, well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So if we're in a situation where uh, a faction of the military has not, um, relinquish the ground to him as commander in chief. And, uh, you know, I got these huge bets out there. I'm, I'm, you know, gosh, I mean, I'm, I might have to use like, you know, part of my, uh, car money to pay off all these bets. I might have to sell one of the Bentleys or something. Uh, So let me ask you this. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, (laughs) you know, uh, you think I need to sell one of the Bentley convertibles? Should I, should I, uh, you know, start paying off these bets or do you think I might actually be found to have been exactly right? That first of all, president Trump is still president Trump. He will be president Trump as long as he lives. When he's gone, we will remember him always as president Trump, no matter what Nancy or any of the other fucked up mental cases uh, of following her and the rest of them think he's right. president of the United States. And by the way, they never impeached him, you know, except functionally, you know, he wasn't impeached where he's taken out of office. Uh, they did their little uh, uh, scam. And uh, but, you know, it was based on, you know, lying evidence. So, you know, screw them all. So th- then the second question is, 
come April 1st, I said it on your show. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody that voted for the Democratic candidate and that later became Biden, I said this for a year, over a year before the election. Right. Uh, in my bets, I said, uh, President Trump will still be president come April 1st. Well, he's still a president. And Biden, anybody that voted for Biden would be the fool. Now, I will yield ground and say that functionally, uh, he wasn't recognized as president currently mm -hmm. by Congress and the courts. But here's the sticky wicket. On some specific date, just prior to April 1st, did a faction, a section of the military, as a result of their investigation, which wasn't going to take years, took a specific period of time. And at the conclusion of that uh, period of a certain number of weeks, uh, did 45 <clears throat> uh, at the proper 45 point get read in on what exactly happened and then we defer to you and what's the sequence nothing must be done publicly there's no requirement that with the military determines that a maturing candidate has been placed in position of authority or something's happened in the government when they uh decide who the lawful commander-in-chief the person who is the elected representative of the American people. When they decide who that actually is and they advise that person and read them in and swear them in as commander in chief, recognizing their authority as commander in chief, is there any requirement that the public be made aware of what's occurred? No. The reason is, is because there's an ongoing potential threat. Mm -hmm. The reality is uh, the president is recognized as a commander in chief. Then he is read in. Here's what we found. Here's what we found happened. Here's the evidence we have right now. Mm -hmm. Here's the evidence of who was involved, the nation states, the individuals, the treasonous traitors, the mechanisms. Then here's what's still in play. Here's where we're still vulnerable. Here's the rest of what we know of what the plans were to complete the takedown of America. Uh, and then the military does exactly what it's supposed to do. The generals say, and now, Mr. Commander-in-Chief, the elected representative of the people constitutionally, what do you want us to do next? The Commander-in-Chief directs the next actions. The commander in chief makes those final decisions. And what would be the objective? Continuing to protect the Constitution, the contract between the American people and their government, and the Republic, the nation of states. And then, once you've protected America, you got to keep the economy going. You can't crash the economy, you'll kill millions. You don't know what the other threats are. You know, Jaco, do you remember over in Los Angeles on Wilshire Boulevard, oh, yeah. February 2nd, 2018, I believe it was, uh, we had military helicopters came in, mm -hmm. guys, uh, special forces rappel out of the helicopters on top of a building, and then they go inside, blow concussion grenades. Uh, fortunately, a couple of the windows were open with some of the pressure out, so it didn't, you know, blow anybody's eardrums out. Mm -hmm. And then uh, blow the windows out, technically. They went glass everywhere. And uh, uh, then they took out two. Uh, they're, they're really a nest bag. They're like a popcorn, Jiffy Pop popcorn bag they're designed to help contain uh a uh, small explosion mm -hmm. and uh even if it was a full-on large nuke it would at least limit it a little bit and uh, uh we, we we stretch this same material over our all of our uh plants where we uh make the uh weapons to you know if something happens it it lowers the uh uh, radius uh, where the uh, material may get spread out and around. So they pulled out two 
nest bags, one with the radiological, one with the biological, put them in helicopters with their teams and went different directions. Mm -hmm. uh, and then all of the troops that were there, they didn't close down the streets. They didn't tell anybody they were coming. They made no preparations in the area. Yeah, guys out there having a Franken beer fest in their porch on their uh, mm -hmm. condo next door. And they're taking pictures with their cell phones. You got people in their cars down the street right. taking pictures with their cell phone. Why? Because it wasn't a training exercise. Oh, no, but it was on the local news. It was a training exercise. They said so on Channel 5. Oh, really? Okay. Well, it wasn't. And you're an idiot. No, pre no activity of that type using military forces can be used in a civilian area like that uh, in a training thing unless the president personally signs off on it. Remember, we lost a chopper uh, there supposedly picking up uh, Osama bin Laden. What if one of the choppers had gone awry, there'd been a miscalculation and it craned off and went into one of those buildings full of exactly. people on Wilshire Boulevard? You think Trump wouldn't have been ran out of office, you know, instantly because of, you know, why would you do that when you got training bases just for that purpose? That wasn't a training exercise. And by the way, at the same time that happened, where the real training exercise was at, that everybody had been told was a training exercise, that this was supposedly part of over at Long Beach Harbor. What happened at the same time? We had one of the largest drug busts in world history. Wow. Right there while we're doing a training exercise. Okay, well, we had all our guys there, just like the Russians were doing a training exercise over there in Ukraine. <laughs> By the way, when, when that... Stratcom communication came out saying that uh, don't expect a linear response. That was a warning to Putin and them commies, get your ass back. Mm -hmm. And within hours, they began withdrawing those troops, but quick. Don't let the screen door hit you on the ass on the way out. They moved those guys back because they got the warning, you're not going to play with us and we're not screwing around. And why was that? Because the guys at the top were not going to be sitting on their hands while we yielded ground there, while we're taking care of problems here inside the country. Yep. We are not decapitated. And that was a command level decision to make that warning. If we're not commanding all the forces, because just like you saw and what you heard about, there's a little disagreement in the general staff. Well, where it counts, mm -hmm. further up the ladder, maybe there isn't as much disagreement as you think. But over there in Long Beach Harbor, when they were supposedly doing that training exercise that wasn't a training exercise, that was cover for what they were right. really going to do. Mm -hmm. They went out there, did the largest drug bust in U.S. history, mm -hmm. uh, one of the largest in U.S. history, one of the largest in world history. And in there, they got enough fentanyl to kill every human being in Mexico, America, and Canada twice. Mm. We are under attack on multiple fronts. It's not just the vote fraud. That was just one component of a very broad attack on America. Just like what we did with the commie pinko Russians back when we took out the Soviet Union. So, so this, this, it's beautiful when I hear when I heard you talk about this before that mission, because when I saw it, you know, I I had trained for that and had done training like that. So when I see her, when I saw the tier one guys, SEAL Team Six level guys, you know, doing that mission, I was like, that's real. That's the real deal. I don't know what these guys got going on, but. That's, that's real. What it's, and then I heard later from you, you know, what actually went down. So that, that's just the kind of level, you know, of reveal that you have. So I, people that are getting well, and, this. And by the way, amazing, think, think COVID. Think COVID right. but two Same years thing. sooner. What yeah. would have happened had the, a biological been released there? How would it have been released? There's a bus tunnel that goes underneath Wilshire Boulevard. That's right where the beginning of the bus tunnel is. It mm -hmm. services all the hotels down the street for all of the staff that work at those hotels, the people come and go to all their jobs in those buildings there. So if you released a uh, back to, uh, biological weapon mm -hmm. 
and infected people going to work along there. They'd have gone into all those hotels, maybe have two, three, five, ten 10 days. Mm-hmm. And all those people go get on airplanes that are staying at those hotels. I think there's six of them down the street there. Mm-hmm. And uh, they go back, you know, whatever country they're coming from, because there's a lot of international travel on that specific group there. And wow. then on top of that, uh, after you've got everybody infected, well, what's going to happen? All of your uh, uh, people are going to show up that are looking to see if, uh, you know, there's some kind of infection, CDC stuff, okay, mm-hmm. to see what's going on. What's one of the risks you have when you go in where there's been a terrorist act or a bomber? The second one. Second they get all of your rescue people Massive, in there. Yeah. They get all your Blast stuff. Them. And then they blow the real one up. That's the big yeah. one. Cover all the evidence. Okay? Absolutely. And they take all and they take all your first tier personnel out. Mm-hmm. So the long and short short of it is uh, you're looking for a biological. What happens next? Mm-hmm. They were scheduled to demolish that building two weeks after the guys landed there and took whatever out of there. It might have been ready to go a day or two or five later. Maybe it wasn't going the next day. And then as soon as that that biologic holds out there, they're tearing down the building. All the trucks were going to show up and run right through the middle of the town with all the concrete dust and debris and everything, taking Mm -hmm. it out to the landfill, driving right through the middle of L.A. Mm -hmm. And what was going to be in there? Radiological. And by the way, what happens now, it's, you thought you were only here for a biological. Now you got a radiological Jeez. and it's covering the whole thing. You mm-hmm. could have even detonated small something and spread it all over the area. And now nobody's coming in to look for it. Cause have you seen how hard it is to work in a hot zone with the mm-hmm. suits and everything you have to do. And you're trying to do some oh, forensic yeah. thing and figure out who was behind this. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, when that all happened, first of all, it was the Guatemalan cultural center. Uh, but also that was the same week that El Chapo was convicted mm. out of Mexico there. And then also the, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, uh, Altieri, whatever his name was, uh, from an ex IBM, mm. Keith Rainieri. And, uh, right, the deal ahead. with him was he had all of this, uh, political connection to the Salinas family down in Mexico. Mm. And the child trafficking, the girls, the young girls and all that related to NXIVM and the older women, the Hollywood stars, all of that, that were part of that, that whole Hollywood component. And then you had El Chapo, which, by the way, the drugs coming up through uh, Mexico and that whole crowd, who was facilitating that? Who's bringing in the guns and even the uh, vehicles? Those are all out of China. Mm. China's using the drug cartels out of Mexico like a a foreign legion against America. Mm -hmm. And so uh, El Chapo, he's rolling over and stuff. Where do you think they got the information about what was coming in and how with those ships? And then at the exact same time, the stuff at the Guatemalan Cultural Center. So at the end of the day, they thought they got away with something. Hey, let me ask you this. If they didn't get away with it there, maybe we had people that were talking. And how long did it go Maybe even though we had to play the game to a certain point just to find out the rest of what we might not know, you think it's possible that we still have some human intel people and some uh, computer guys that ride surfboards that know enough to figure out how this uh, stolen vote happened. They can uh, bring that evidence out. And by the way, if you think, if the people in your audience thought that these fucking piece of shit assholes who think that the election from 2020 is over and we're on mm-hmm. to 2022 and 24, mm-hmm. and that's all there is to it, and we're never going back. I'm here to tell you, it ain't over yet, baby. Oh, it yeah. ain't over see yet. Oh. See the okay, reveal okay. coming. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay, so I got to tell you. Okay, so uh, yesterday, um, I let out for sale uh the second edition of my book you know the kid by the side of the road the first edition was the uh uh, victory edition and um you know well trump didn't win he didn't well we'll see how that goes uh but uh uh so let me just pop this over here let's kind of got that right there um so 
Okay, I see. That was you doing it, not me. Uh, so here's what the deal is. Yesterday, I put out my second edition, which is the same um, story, information stuff that was in the first edition, but a few different pictures from uh, some of the fun stuff, including the call makes for perfect day and some other stuff. But it's the inaugural edition. Now, how would I have the audacity to call the second edition of my book the inaugural edition? And the first edition had a picture of President Trump on the back. The second edition is kind of, you know, you wonder what's going on. Because the second edition has a picture of Melania on the back. And she is beautiful. And I'm glad you're showing it there. Here's the one thing that's kind of interesting. That dress that Melania is wearing, that's the dress she wore when she got off of Air Force One on January 20th, while Trump, President Trump, was still president, while she was still the first lady, because they didn't stay in Washington, D.C. for the Biden inauguration ceremony and, and watch no him turnover. stand on the Bible, right? No they turnover. went to Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> They didn't participate in that little charade. Mm -hmm. And she wore this dress. Now, when, when ships are at sea and they need to communicate, you know, going back to days before they even had wire, you know, and, and wireless communication, things like that. Um, uh, ships at sea, they use flags to send mm -hmm. messages back and forth between the ships and the flags individually and the combination of flags will tell the other uh, crew, the other ship, what they wanted to know and communicate mm -hmm. it back up the line to the uh, you know, fleet commander. So uh, uh, Melania has been the flagpole, if you will, in these communications. And so almost invariably, whatever she wears is a message for that moment in history to everybody that's watching. So here we are on this incredible day think of the magnitude of the moment it's trump's last day in office and he's not president anymore well some people's opinion so when she's making a statement flying the flag telling you everything michael you've got the book i signed one for you and if you look Every single page in the book, in the lower right-hand or left-hand corner is the page number, and it's in orange. And above that number, every single page has a cube. And in fact, the last words in the book relate to election 2020 equals mega cubed over corn. E equals M3 square, uh, M3 or squared mm -hmm. uh, over C. Einstein had the equation E equals MC squared. This is equals MC cubed. That's the election 2020. And that's what I said in the book. And that was uh, my dream. That was all of this stuff that, that I talked about. Even the color, when they were doing the book, uh, printing it, and they're, they're, uh, it's out being foiled right now. Everywhere that you see orange around Melania and everywhere that's orange on the book has a beautiful reflective uh, foil applied to it. It's beautiful, spectacular. And those will be done here in just a couple of days, and those books will start going out. And so uh, Melania, as the last public act as the official flotus with President Trump climbs off the plane wearing that dress with the exact color cubes, shapes over and over and over saying exactly what I said in my whole book. Election 2020 equals mega over corn cubed and the corn is all these farm products cia fbi they have the farm where they train guys mm -hmm. and these people have been training and working against america brandon comey uh treasonous 
traitors going over there and, and working with the Brits, MI6, mm -hmm. to overturn our election. Because that's where it all started from. Oh, Go yeah. back to 2016. What, what happened with the dossier? Creamer out of McCain's office, Maricopa County. What did they do? They were coordinating their actions to stop Trump, the candidate, from winning the election with this lying, thieving, pissant dossier mm. full of lies, proven to be lies over and over because it's the fucking Brits, MI5 and MI6, mm -hmm. working with uh, treasonous traitors here in America. Exactly. To overturn the will of the people, the contract with the people, the Constitution of the United States, the contract with the American people to have a representative government that has authority over them. But how can it be representative if they steal the vote with lies, when they put documents and players and everything in there that's lying. And now you're not getting a person that's representative of the American people in office. You're getting their scamming group, putting their puppet in play to do their will against America, their way. Not a, not a representative of the American people. That's what's going on here. And so our military is in the middle of another revolutionary war with mm -hmm. the fucking Brits. And yep. by the way, just like George Washington had one of his most trusted generals, many said it was his most trusted general, betrayed him and went over to the Brit side. OK, and so what do we have? Do we have some generals running America that, you know, are, are, uh, are we going to have some traitors here? Mm -hmm. Are we going to see that find that we had people in office in our government that were sold out to these globalists overseas to run America? President Trump sent a flag signal to the citizens of America. This isn't over. Election 2020 is still in play. Election 2020 equals mega cubed over corn. And thank God he ran that flag up the mast. Those of us that are watching saw it. This isn't over. Enjoy the show. Five by five. Massively done. So, you know, a lot of people have been confused and I've been trying to help them, you know, see uh, that the military is still in charge and the military is still operational. So this this is uh, unprecedented uh, what you did today. So I think people are going to come back to this and look at this over and over again, share this far and wide. Now, your your links that uh, that I kind of reviewed revealed there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll have those in the description box and also uh, over on Rumble and BitChute. Well, well, let me do, let me just mention too the the Rumble. Uh, that's the best place to go watch the movie, uh, the called, oh, the yeah. makings for a perfect day. If you're if you've got people that haven't seen that, I think it's amazing. Jennifer Mack did this just mm -hmm. amazing job Absolutely. on that movie, and people will just never know how hard she worked on that. It was uh, mm -hmm. uh, it uh, the editing. I don't know anybody else that could have done it. I, you know, I, I spoke during it, but the real mastery there was the way she pulled all those pieces together. Yeah. So we all were a debt. And I, be, I get people telling me all the time, I've watched it five, six, 10 times. I just love listening to music, you know? So she did a great job over there. Yeah, um, she is She is so beautiful. Such a, a sweet and gentle soul too. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, then um, uh, on the book, we did have uh, some mischief that was played uh, in the uh, first one. We've covered, I think, most all of everybody's got their book. There's still uh, probably a, a several dozen that we're trying to get sorted out. And uh, But I've got first editions that I held back aside, make sure I got every single person got their book. Uh, that's why I held off on the second edition until we thought we had it solved. And we have now every order goes out with a tracking code so we can track it all the way through till it gets right in that person's hands. So um, uh, I appreciate everybody that uh, uh, 
fought through that with us and we got that solved. Mm -hmm. And uh, they actually had to create a new way of doing it for our particular thing. And uh, so uh, once they had that in place, it was totally locked in. And these will go out very quickly. Uh, uh, the first of them will ship in just about uh, five days. Uh, as soon as they come back from where they're having this foil put on them. And there was people that were making copies on the Xeroxes and sending them out. And, oh. you know, so they're originals and they weren't, they were all over online and, uh, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's, you know, it's a compliment that they want to do that, but uh, uh, be a little more difficult with these because they're uh, have this on it. And then the next book, uh, we're just working now on the uh, rest of that and it's all new content. Mm. And the next one will be out, uh, shortly uh to replace this one and that's the storm <laughs> nice no, oh i had, I, had I said I fine had dinner with a guy that, that, that works with you on that and he is he is amazing you guys you guys are quite a team oh. together oh. yeah he's 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 very good if i didn't have a good editor man it would not be the same uh, as what we <laughs> oh, got yeah, me so. too yeah definitely <laughs> Yeah, he did. Uh, he did uh, amazing work. He was uh, a real gift, uh, mm -hmm. literally from God, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, okay. There's, a, you know, we're on yeah. a divine mission. You and I. Uh, that's one of the things people think this is all just, uh, um, you know, us having fun or whatever. Look, the whole world's on the line here. Everything's at stake. In fact, I'm I'm uh, picking up Jim Caviezel here in a couple mm -hmm. of days, nice. and. Uh, uh, we're we're in this last phase where we're trying to lock in our uh, marketing money for the movie the sound of freedom that you came down to vegas and watched with a lot of the other influencers mm -hmm. and uh i'm hoping to have theater. that mm. no that was it's it's, it's Humble, an amazing humble, movie yeah, absolutely and uh the reality is we got a whole world you know there's more slavery mm. in the world today than ever it's before amazing. in human history. Mm -hmm. Now, part of that's because we have a bigger population, but there's this component that's just hard to get your mind around that there's more slavery today than ever before in human history. But think about it. There in Libya, they weren't having slave bazaars for all the way from 67 until just a, a few years ago in 2013. And all of a sudden, as soon as Gaddafi's out, I mean, literally, he's out. And the crowd that comes in, this Muslim Brotherhood crowd, and they got slave bazaars going in there, stealing kids all over North Africa, shipping them up to Qatar and to other places, uh, kids coming out of Asia, uh, uh, all over South America, and they're being traded like uh, trading cards and worse. And so here in our lifetime, people talk, you know, the, the first, you know, uh, revolutionary war with England, uh, that didn't really quite go away. They were in there doing mischief with us all the way up through when we had the Civil War mm -hmm. and it was over, you know, uh, slavery in part. It was really a banking thing primarily and, and getting the states and commerce and all that uh, thing with the fucking Brits again, you know, 1812 war and on. We just had, they've been doing mischief all along and they're doing it again. Oh, yeah. And so even here now, here we're having a similar issue. We thought we had slavery, you know, taken care of. Well, maybe it was black and white then, although, you know, by the way, the largest slave owner in South Carolina was black hmm. coming into the Civil War. Hmm. Uh, I talked to, I spent time with one of his uh, great, great, great grandsons here the other day. He's a great guy. And he's got quite a, and he's a Confederate and uh, actually a very interesting guy. He got a great history. Um, and, uh, uh, it isn't necessarily even a, a race issue at any level. It's not a black white thing. You know, there's a lot of whites who were slaves back in the time of Civil War. People want to be in denial of that, you know, not just here in America, but all over the world. But this era now, it's even beyond just uh, human slavery. It's, it's in large measure, it's children. And uh, that's, you know, there's small hearts small hands praying moment to moment every day please god please yeah. Yeah. and if you're not touched by that if you don't hear that if you can't hear that if your heart's that heart that you can allow slavery in our generation 
especially these small children and worse, then uh, you know maybe there isn't a place for you in this world. We cannot tolerate that this goes on in our lifetime, in our world. Uh, God gave this world to Adam and his seed, and it's ours. And we are supposed to manage it, to do with it according to, you know, this divine uh, understanding that we have, this divine contract. And to, you know, when Adam was in the garden, he wasn't there just walking around eating the fruit, whatever's going on. No, he was supposed to tend the garden, to manicure the garden, to grow the garden, to make it, you know, uh, ornament, to give it order. It wasn't just chaotic. He was there as uh, the groundskeeper. And we're still the groundskeeper on this planet ourselves. Mm -hmm. And in corners of this planet, the horrors are beyond comprehension. And you know where the most child uh, pornography and trafficking is? The whole world is right here in America. Right in America, yeah. So Jim and I are on a mission. It's a mission from God to get this uh, uh done in this particular phase that we have in the movie, get it out for fall release, uh, get the second movie uh, in production. Uh, the script's nearly done, and it's even more compelling than this one. And uh, get it out there in the general audiences, and then folks like you and some of the other hosts like that that have seen it can talk authoritatively, and we oh, get yeah. this thing under control. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's uh, we're, we live in an amazing moment because people for generations, eons, have prayed to be in a time when you could get some of this uh, evil off the planet and, uh, you know, stop it. And we have the means, the mechanisms. We're not at the mercy of these evil people. Mm -hmm. We're the ones with the power. And they can try to cook the vote and cook the way we do things and, and uh, you know, convince people electronically with all their electronic frauds that they're in control. But the reality is there's more of us by many orders of magnitude than there are of them Absolutely. or their brainwashed masses. We're going to go get our country back. We're going to get our country sorted out, our own house in order. And then we're going out and help the rest of the world, not to be the rest of the world's masters, but to be the rest of the world's brothers. We're not our brother's keeper. We're our brother's brother. And we're going to do it. And that's the way it is. And they're not stopping us. That's beautiful. And that's that's a great way to end it. You know, you you always come, you always, you know, put out put out some great information. I could talk on and on. I have so many things to, you know, that I like to go into, but uh, I mean, your time you put out the perfect thing for the military. I love that you come in because I was a former military guy and you that's like use my platform and I love that to uh, really reach the military guys. Hopefully those guys, maybe there's few still, I never know. They're still on the fence. They see this and it's a, it's a done deal. And everyone else that's still doubting, you should never doubt after seeing this. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey bro, I, I appreciate it tremendously. I appreciate your audience as we come in. I know I, I, I go a little slower sometimes than they want, but I think you have to think about where we're at, what's going on. I'm hoping people slow down and did that. And I think, everybody here for allowing me that yes, luxury. Absolutely. I think it's Beautiful. important and um, pray for those little hearts and those little hands that are praying mm -hmm. for us to show up that they'll hang on a little longer and uh, let's go get them. Let's help them. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Warren. Thanks, Michael.